This afternoon, I want to share a very practical and meaningful presentation on praying together. We pray. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath day. It has been a time where we have seen rivers of blessing. And I pray now as we consider this important topic in this prayer conference, Power from Above, about praying together. May our hearts be blessed and may we also be equipped that our churches, our homes could be houses of prayer for all people. Is my prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may recognize the words of Jesus at the second cleansing of the temple. He had cleansed the temple at the beginning of his ministry, recorded in John chapter 2. But now, as recorded by the synoptic writers, at the end of his ministry, Jesus comes again to the temple, and it is still being used as a marketplace. And Jesus says, My house shall be called what? Now he's quoting, actually, <laughs> can I say his own words? Because he is not only Jesus, the incarnate Son of God, but he is the eternal Son of God. And the prophet Isaiah had recorded the words of the Lord in Isaiah 56 and verse 7, which adds another few words. Besides, my house shall be called the house of prayer. There in Isaiah's record of the word of the Lord, some 700 years earlier than the cleansing of the temple during the ministry of Jesus. Isaiah records the word of the Lord. My house shall be called a house of prayer for... All nations. Wouldn't it be amazing if people said, if you need a place to pray, go to the little church there in Ringgold or go to the church there in uh, Conasaga. Is that a place? Or Kennesaw? Or I think I just made up a name. <laughs> go there. That is a house of prayer for all nations. Wouldn't that be amazing? Or perhaps you're out in a rural setting and you have a house of prayer in your home. They say, go to that house. That is a house of prayer for all people. In that same passage in Isaiah chapter 56, though, I, I found this and it brought some joy to my heart. Because earlier in that same verse, the Lord says this. I will make them what? Joyful. Where? Where? Now, I want you to get that because uh, I, I've wrestled with the whole idea of why people don't go to prayer meeting, and I figured it out. Do you want to know the answer? They went one time. <laughs> Jesus wants his house to be a house of prayer for all nations, and he says, I will make them what? joyful in my house of prayer. So I want to just share with you a journey my wife and I have been on. Now we've been gone from Forest Lake Church for nine years. We had six and a half of the happiest years of our ministry. We saw more miracles there than, um, than I can count. But when we first came to Orlando, to Forest Lake Church, there was no prayer meeting. There were 2,300 members on the books. But they were fat, not strong. Now, I don't say that to be critical, but a church cannot be strong if they are not calling for prayer. My wife and I, for more than a year, we went on Wednesday evening. How many people typically would come? About four or five. My wife and I sometimes would double the attendance. 
You say, Pastor Derek, you were pastoring a church, three worship services, grew to five worship services. Don't you think you were too busy to go to a meeting on Wednesday with only half a dozen people? What's the answer? The answer is, if anybody was too busy to take time to pray, it was Jesus. But the Bible says, early in the morning, a long while before dawn, he went to a solitary place, and there he prayed. I would suggest to you that we need to pray more than ever before. Something happened there, David. Young people, young leaders, a prayer revival began to happen. Forty days of prayer. Ten days of prayer, a gathering of people, the average age. By the way, do you notice that the average age of many prayer meetings is like 87? (laughs) What if the average age could be 30? That's the average age of our world church. That's why Hope Sabbath School, we keep our average age at 30, because that's the world church. What, What would it take to energize young people? To say, I've got to go tonight because that's a house of prayer for all people. And the Lord will make me joyful in his house of prayer. We saw a prayer revival happen. And as Pastor Mark said, a humbling thought that pastors of other denominations driving by on Wednesday would say, what is happening at the church? Because the parking lot was full. I remember a leader came. He said, uh, oh, are you having a meeting tonight? He saw the, the sanctuary was quite full. He said, are you having a meeting? I was just coming for prayer meeting. I said, this is prayer meeting. I remember asking and saying, how many of you are not members of the congregation? And about a third of the people raised their hands. You see, it's not just for us against them. It's a house of prayer for all the nations. People would fly in. A couple came from Toronto. I said, what are you doing? You're on vacation? They said, no, we came because we heard this is a house of prayer for all people. During that experience, and I've just got 48 minutes to share it with you. During that experience, my wife and I learned four important lessons that I want to share with you today. Maybe you want to write them down, unless, of course, you have a great memory and then just listen. But we learned during the next five years or so before we left, and I think it would be fair to say one of the things we missed the most when we left was the house of prayer. In fact, I remember standing before the church. The church was growing exponentially, not only there on the campus, but globally in its television ministry. That's where Hope Sabbath School started, now in 220 countries around the world. It started because God's people prayed. I remember one time telling the group that was gathered, thank you for your prayers. I do not think I could survive without your prayers. The the battle is too intense. The challenge is too great. But do you know, the kingdom of darkness trembles at the sound of fervent prayer. Because they know they will suffer loss. Let's pray. Let's pray. Four lessons I want to share with you that we learned during that time. I already told you why so few people, it seems, few of our churches have houses of prayer for all people. I don't think it's because we don't want to see a prayer revival. Maybe we don't know how. And, and we're f- perplexed. We're maybe frustrated. Just a handful of people come. I can't promise you if you implement These four lessons, they'll come next week. But persevere, press on. Let your church be a house of prayer for all people. So what are the lessons? Here's lesson number one we learned. Focus on what? Focus on praise. The Bible says, 3,000 years ago, a scripture song was written. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts 
with praise. Does anybody know where that's found? Don't say in the Bible. It is in the Bible. It's found in Psalm 100 and verse 4. My wife has a beautiful scripture song, the whole psalm. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. Yeah, well, I won't sing it. But enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. If, you, if your heart desire is, is for your church to be a house of prayer for all the nations, an essential component is to focus on praise. Sing songs of praise. Offer testimonies of praise. I'm going to ask the ladies to help me with the song. Come on up here. You're going to play the piano, right? Yes. But I just want to share what a mentor of mine said about praise. Uh, he was asked one time, he died long before I was born, but he lived in the city where I was born, Bristol, England. George Mueller, have you heard the name? Great man of prayer. He was asked once, how, how long do you praise the Lord? And he said, I praise him till my heart is glad. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Oh, Lord, I got my husband's a pain just like he was yesterday. And, <laughs> and my toe's still hurting. And you think that the folks who came to prayer meeting are going to go away feeling joyful. <laughs> praise the Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. I praise him until my heart is glad. Well, here's a song that was written 3,000 years ago. And Bodhi will put a little tune to it. And Ashley and Emily are going to help sing it. And you're going to sing it with me. And please, don't sing like this. I will praise you. Let's praise him. Are you ready? Here we go. I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your mom straight out of the Bible. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to you. You sound good. Let's sing again. I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to you. One more time. Let's sing together. I will praise you, O oh Lord. We come to a house of prayer. People say this isn't a regular prayer meeting. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O oh Most High. Thank you for smiling while you're singing. By the way, we're going to give you that collection of 18 songs. It's going to include uh, the song, uh, Did we sing, Heal Me, O Lord, and I Shall Be Healed? And, and then I will praise all on one collection called Sing to the Lord. And there's going to be a piece of paper out on the table. You can take a picture, and it will give you a coupon code. So you can download the whole collection free. Not selling anything. But wouldn't it be good to be filled with the Word of God? And when you come to the house of prayer, you know, they would come in. People would come in. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. We need to focus on praise. We also need to offer testimonies of praise. I just got this video a few days ago, and I just said, hallelujah. I would have asked Isabella to come here today, give her testimony. But she lives in Canada. But hear her testimony. Have testimonies of praise at your house of prayer. It's a beautiful testimony. Hi, I'm Isabella, and this is my sister, Felishka. We started singing at a young age. We love music, and we like to sing a lot at church and play our instruments. About a year ago, something happened with our youngest daughter, Isabella. We noticed that uh, sometimes she couldn't answer when we call her. We have a keyboard at home. She would crank the volume up, and we noticed that, oh, that's too loud. So I told my parents about, like, there was, like, buzzing vibrations, and they quickly scheduled an appointment with an uh, ear specialist. He told us that it was something happening to Isabella's ears. I had hearing loss in both of my ears. 
I just started crying because he said that by the age of 20, I would lose my hearing. It was scary for my age. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to go to school. Was I going to be able to um, hear my friends or like hear music again? Because we love singing at church and it was just hard to like process the news. My mom and my sister started crying and I was just, I was in, sh in shock because um, we came to the appointment thinking it was something like minor, but it was actually a lot. And even the doctor was like handing my mom a Kleenex box. And everyone was just so stressed. Just thinking to myself, what will happen next? But I just thought, God has a plan. At the meeting, Pastor Mori was talking about the benefits of praying, the power of healing to prayer. There was a program of anointing the next day, early morning. And we're gonna take her to the anointing service. And the pastors in the service lay their hands on her and we pray for her. And at that moment, we just pretty much leave everything on God's hands. Everybody singing and praying together. That was beautiful to see. When we went there, there was like something special. I felt a really good presence. There was a, another appointment with the specialist, but it felt different after the anointment service. It felt peace. I actually felt like great because I felt like something good was going to happen in the results. We, we waited there for a long time and then he came and he didn't say much. He was very quiet. He had like this shock expression on his face. And then he finally said, well, Isabella's test came all good. It seems like she doesn't have um, hearing loss anymore, or she didn't have hearing loss at the beginning, from the beginning. And he really couldn't explain that much. And we just sat there like very, it was a very strange moment. So when the doctor told me the great news, I just, um, said it's a miracle because God listens when we pray and he knows what we're going through. I just felt like that was a really good testimony to him too because not everyone in this world can fix things. It's God who can fix things. When you come to Jesus in prayer, you know, he's, he's there to just to, to help us and give us the answers that we need and that help, helps our faith to grow as we as we encounter all the situations that we face in life. In the Bible, there's a verse that helped me. It's found in James 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. There's another Bible verse that encouraged me a lot. In Romans 8, verse uh, 31. What then shall we say in response of these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God gives us our talents and blesses us with them, we should um, use them in his glory and nothing can stand in our way. When you have testimonies like that at House of Prayer, does it make your heart glad? <laughs> Focus on praise. But a second lesson that my wife and I learned during that prayer revival was to focus on what? You say, Derek, it's a prayer meeting. Ah. But you see, that's where I've learned we make mistakes. The Bible does say to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. But you know what I discovered many times if I go to a prayer meeting is that sometimes people spend all the time talking about their prayer requests. And it goes on and on and on. Do I have another prayer request? I'm like, brother, could we just pray? Are you with me? I mean... Half an hour of prayer requests is really boring. How about we break up immediately into groups of two and just pray? And if I hear my sister 
praying for her daughter, I can say, Father, I agree in prayer, and I pray for that beautiful family. And we don't have to just talk. Let's pray. Are you with me? Pray for each other in the name of Jesus. I still remember a young professional colleague of Bodil who said, don't ever stop having where you pray with one other person, a blessing for them in the name of Jesus. She said, there's many people who will come and no one has prayed for them that day. Don't just say, well, we're going to pray for... Pray for each other in the name of Jesus. Pray for those who are feeble and weak. Some might say... Is it appropriate to have an anointing service as part of the house of prayer? And the answer is, it's a house of prayer for all the nations. And if a person comes and says, will you pray for me? I'm, I, I'm needing, I'm feeble and weak. I, I mean, let's, let's, let's adjust our time a little bit here. And let's allow time. Let it be a place of prayer. Now, that sounds so simple, but please don't miss it. You say, oh, I think I just understood, which means we won't sing praise songs for the whole time. It also means the third point, that we won't preach a sermon for 50 minutes. We've only got an hour. We start right at 7, and we're finished at 8. Many people have worked a long day. We want to start on time and end on time. We do want to focus on the Word, but not at the expense of focusing on those first two essential elements. The first one is focus on what? Praise and focus on prayer. But we do want to focus on the Word. Takes eight to ten minutes, at least that's what we did at the House of Prayer at Forest Lake, focusing on a prayer passage in the scripture, but not just another homily, but taking time to respond to the Word of God in prayer. You see, I do believe that the Word of God is powerful. I do. I remember a lady came to the House of Prayer, she dragged her son to the front. It was at the end of the house of prayer, 8 o'clock. His name's David. She dragged him to the front. He had long hair like, like Samson. She said, my son needs a miracle. So what are we going to do? Shall we send him somewhere else? Or do you believe that God can work miracles at the house of prayer? <laughs> That's why we need to pray for each other. That's why Paul said, pray for me. Drags him to the front. So I pray in the name of Jesus for this long, flowing, locked-haired man. And then he's gone. But he comes back the next Wednesday to the house of prayer. And he's not being dragged by his mother. And at the end of the house of prayer, he comes up to me. He's got a Bible in his hand, and he's got papers sticking out of the Bible. He said, Pastor, I just wanted to tell you, I've started Bible studies. I said, who's studying the Bible? He said, well, I walked up to that person over there and asked him if he'd study the Bible with me. Praise the Lord. He said, yes. The Word of God needs to be the center of a house of prayer. That doesn't mean we're just having a sermon and a little... That's not house of prayer. That's house of preaching. Now, I believe in preaching. Don't get me wrong. But I think we need more prayer. So we've got to focus on praise, focus on prayer, focus on the Word. Oh, I shared David's story with you. But this one, this will either cause your house of prayer to be vibrant and alive and impact your community, or it will just kind of become introspective and wither and die. Not only focus on praise and prayer and the Word of God, but focus on outreach. So here's a question I have for you. How can you include more people from your community in your house of prayer? Is that an important question? You say, Pastor, I can't even get the church members to come. Well, maybe if the community starts flocking in, maybe the saints will come too. 
So how can you include more people in your, from your community in the house of prayer? And here's the key. Look at it. Find what? A creative way to do what? To serve your community at your house of prayer. I'm going to share one example, and then I'm going to ask you some others. There is a ministry that started 15 years ago, right about the time we came to Forest Lake Church. It's a ministry called Prayers and Squares. It's not unique to Forest Lake Church, but there was a lady who liked quilting, and she said, um, I would like to start a quilting ministry. By the way, 15 years later, this is quilt number 4092. Those have gone to cancer wards. They've gone to people in, in their homes. I remember someone who, who's a hairdresser, a beautician. There was a man who worked there. He was dying of all kinds of diseases resulting from a lifestyle that was out of harmony with the word of God. But I want to tell you, all of God's children need prayer. He loves them all. And so this lady asked this man, I don't know if he'd ever been in church, would you like to be given a prayer quilt to remind you that people of God are praying for you? By the way, there's little strings here that you can come up and tie them. And that's a reminder when a person's discouraged, they look and they see those knots to know the people of God are praying. He said, yes. He passed away some months later. His last request was that he would be buried, covered with the prayers of the people of God. At the viewing, his mother picked the quilt up out of the casket and she was walking around holding it. A house of prayer for all people. So here's a quilt. That's what they do. Um, it's beautiful. It takes, I don't know how many hours. Um, by the way, they've experienced miracles too. You say, we don't have the resources to do all of that. They had run out of materials. They're saying, Lord, we don't know what to do. And one day, there was a knock there at the Prayers and Squares ministry. And the man said, uh, I have some material. My, uh, my wife... She was a recipient of one of your prayer quilts, and, and she so much was blessed, and she passed away recently. But uh, one of her final requests was to give her material to the house of prayer. So the lady who was there in the Prayers and Squares ministry said, well, you can just set it on the table. And the man said, I don't think you understand. Come with me. And as she walked out with this man who'd lost his wife, there, there's a trailer out there. She was a professional woman, but, but in her ailing years, she decided she wanted to start a home business making purses with material. And so she had a trailer load of material, which her last request was, could you give it to the house of prayer? At Forest Lake Church. So they filled up their entire storage area. <laughs> you see, I do believe that if we're looking for a creative way to minister to our community, that God will provide the resources that are needed. Amen. Outreach, focusing on outreach is a crucial component. Now, Bodil, I didn't ask you to share this, but but I'm going to ask you to because I know you'd be willing to. There's a microphone over there. Uh, sometimes the Spirit of God might impress you even at work. Um, but if you don't have a house of prayer to invite them to, where do you invite them? But you were at work uh, there, a nurse practitioner, and, and uh, one of the team members uh, had, had a baby. Right. She had a baby and was very upset over the fact that some of the markers showed that she had um, cystic fibrosis or something of that nature. And so um, we, we asked her, would you like a prayer quilt from, from the Forest Lake Church? And she was very open to that. Was she a religious person, by the way? Um, not as far as I knew. But this was an opportunity where because she was willing to receive the quilt, um, that we invited the whole office. 
And so some people came into our church that had never been there before. And when the ladies found out that um, we were going to be giving a quilt to her, right? To, they, to the mother. The mother. Um, they made a quilt for the baby as well. Is that beautiful? Yeah. It was a little baby quilt <laughs> to then, cover the baby so with prayer too. they quilts ready for them when they came. But the other thing is um, there was a young woman in our uh, congregation, teenager, who um, had cystic fibrosis. And so we asked her, and she sang. This young lady sang. So we asked her, um, would you be willing to come and sing at House of Prayer? Because this was to try to bring encouragement to this mother. And so um, she did. She came, and her family came, and they were able to talk afterwards and compare notes and, and get encouragement. By the way, it was a very upbeat song. I don't remember all the words, but something about I got a couple of dents in my fenders. And, and she was singing, and I'm like, okay, Jesus. Um. I know. So during that song, I was thinking to myself, oh, no, God, what are you, what's happening here? I was very worried about it. I thought, oh, I thought she was going to sing something like Amazing Grace or whatever. But you know what? You have to sit back and let people be who they are. And let the Spirit work. And let the Spirit of God move. And anyways, after the, the house, um, of prayer. house of prayer where we gave the quilt and they got encouragement, she told me, the young mother, that was the best part of the whole service for her. So I was like, thank you, God. So here's a question. What are some other creative ways to serve your community? You say, Derek, we don't have any quilters in our community. By the way, there are about 50 quilters, I think, on this team. Some of them are not even members of the, that church or even of a church, but they come because they believe in what this ministry is doing. Amen. Serving the community. Oh, they prayed over this quilt. By the way, they sent this quilt. They paid for priority shipping to meet us here. They, in case there was someone here. <laughs> They're expecting God to work. <laughs> in fact, they prayed for you ahead of time. They prayed for you. The quilt's for you. They prayed for you. They didn't know the presentation I would give this morning. But they prayed for you ahead of time. <laughs> Isn't God amazing? <laughs> but that's not the only way. I was in Australia with my wife, and, and it was a, they said, we're, we're about 12 active members in our church, and we're all part of the prayer ministry. And they made beautiful little uh, promise boxes. And, and, and they would use the search and replace mode so that all of the promises would say, Fear not, Kathy, for I am with you. And, and everywhere it would have your name. In all of the promises it would say Jody <laughs> or Mark or Raoul. They had given away in their community, this little church had given away, they told me, more than 1,500 promise boxes. It's just a little church, they might say. I don't speak with an Australian accent, but they might say it's just a little church down there. But that little church is a house of prayer for all people. And they're serving their community. I just heard from, uh, from Blue Ridge that... that the, the quilter, um, well, that kind of transition. Where's Blue Ridge? Where are you, Blue Ridge? Blue Ridge wave. I'm looking for you right there, yes. But, but, there's someone who crochets. Is that right? Is that you, Deborah? You're the crocheter? I just met Deborah a few minutes ago. So we don't say, well, we can't do it. We don't have no quilt. Let's do something creative to serve our community. We can crochet, we can do quilts. My wife, when we moved and we missed House of Prayer so much, said, let's start a House of Prayer in our home in Maryland. And she said, what do we have in our hands that we can use? And my wife said, well, I have a lot of scripture song CDs. Could give those away to people to remind them that we're praying for them. There's got to be something. You could bake a loaf of bread. You could do something. 
Or do we just try to sit around, staying out of trouble till Jesus comes? We'll wither. We'll wither. But when you come to a house of prayer that focuses on praise and prayer and the word of God and outreach, something happens to you and your soul is revived. Praying together. I call it house of prayer evangelism. (laughs) That's what I call it. House of prayer evangelism. Where we focus on praise, prayer, on the word, and on outreach. Where we truly believe that God wants to break through in life-changing ways. So here's the question. Who's facing a major challenge and needs the support of a praying community right now? Make a commitment that your church, your home, will be a house of prayer for all people. Pastor Mark and I have been praying. I'm sure that there's a hundred people in the room that would love a custom quilt. But we were praying for the Spirit's guidance. And while I was speaking, the Spirit of God said, It's you, my sister. So I want to invite you to come up. Laurie came to me after the presentation this morning. And she said, that, that was my story. That was my story. And God brought Laurie here. And I wasn't afraid, Pastor, that we'd find someone. <laughs> I already knew that God had something in mind. But uh, I'm going to give Lori, if we've got one of the hand microphones, I'm going to give Lori just an opportunity, if you would, just uh, uh, to share a short testimony of, of, of why you're open to the blessing of God. And, and then we're going to wrap Lori with this prayer quilt. And I'm going to invite women of God, women of God who resonate with Lori's situation and is so thankful she had the courage to say, I I need a special blessing from God. I want you to come up and I want you to tie knots in this quilt and pray for her. Will you do that? What would you like to share? This is not choreographed. No. Lori, share from your heart. You need to hold the mic up by you. Okay. I have been praying for a long time for a complete spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional healing. And a few years ago, the Lord brought uh, my friend Lily into my life. And the whole meeting was just totally unexpected. A student at my school brought us together. She wasn't even supposed to be working at my school. And um, she started talking to me about being an Adventist and and what that meant to her, and she was living it. I've been a Christian for 52 years, and I've only really felt like I remotely am starting to know who God is. And because of things that had happened in my childhood and even on up into my adulthood, I've lost all sense of being able to trust. God was a shame and blame God looking to zap me. And people hurt me. And to have a friend now here on earth that I can trust and that I feel safe with. She's brought me to her home for Bible study and prayer meetings and and everything with two other wonderful ladies. And I've I've found a a church where I feel loved and safe. And matter of fact, got a text from the minister saying, hey, can we baptize you next week? (laughs) And uh, so it's just been such an experience 
and Dolly, who who does the prayer room, she and Charlie, she she's was my second Sabbath school teacher for my second class and uh, of a year long disciple trek class and I'm learning so much. And I still want all of that healing. I still need it. You say, uh, that's not regular prayer meeting, brother. And I say, hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor, I'd like you to take the quilt that's draped over there. Lori's tears are liquid prayers. But they're not tears of despair. She's been surprised with joy. My house, I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. I want to just as the Spirit leads, invite, and I have a reason for just inviting women of God. Is that okay? I want to invite some women of God. You resonate with this sister in Christ. You just come up. You can gather around, you can come around the back, you can tie a knot, say a prayer. There's nothing magical about the quilt, right? We're talking, this is a symbol to remind Lori that she's surrounded with praying family. Tie a knot when you say a prayer for her. And once you've tied the knot, if you could kind of slip over, you're welcome to stay here toward the front, but make a little room so that someone else might be able to come forward. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. You are my praise. You are my praise. You are my praise. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. You are my praise. You are my praise. You are my praise. You are my praise.
God's people said? Amen. My house shall be a house of prayer for all people. I can still remember a couple with their young daughter coming to the house of prayer. The wife said, my husband has been unfaithful to me and we need healing in our home. <laughs> you say, that's not a regular prayer meeting. The husband was shaking standing by her side. The little girl was there. You say, don't tell the little girl. She already knows, doesn't she? We had the privilege of praying for that family. I'll always remember that, David, praying for that family. I thought, that's not like normal. Praise God. A year later, they lived far away. A year later, they came back and that little girl sang a testimony song at the house of prayer. I believe in a miracle working God. I know you do too. We're not anybody special. But I just want to thank God for all the prayers offered for Lori today. What an unexpected joy. Let's pray together. We pray in the name of Jesus. Our Father in heaven. It was very clear when we were sharing the word this morning that your spirit was speaking to Lori's heart and telling her the healing blessing is also for you. And God, I thank you that this prayer quilt will remind Lori that the people of God are praying for her. And just like Isabella shared, it's not because we're anybody special, but the prayer of a righteous person. And that's Jesus. That's not us. We stand under the authority of Jesus. He is the righteous one. Surrender to his will. And God, we thank you that the miracle is already underway for our sister Lori. We bless your name. And I thank you that the courage of her testimony has blessed hearts here today to believe that the blessing is also for them. And so I thank you that as we continue here at this Power From Above prayer conference, that you would work in unusual ways for the honor of your name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. For we have prayed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.